I've gone evergreen because I'm wearing green forever. <laughs> I never normally wear dark green. That's why I never wore this t-shirt. I bought it because I just liked the face on it. I like the Diamante face. But I really don't wear this colour. <laughs> but then when I wear all this colour, I like it. But this, this is now a world first. I've never done this before because I've only bought these today. They're shit. They're shit. But I've not worn them with my wig yet. When I put them on, I looked like Mark, the TV <laughs> presenter. I made a video. Hi, I'm Mark. But I'm wondering, with this hair, it's like... I can't think which famous lady it looks like. I don't know if it's Mariah Carey who did her hair like this. It's quite Pamela Anderson-y there. But there's something about this shape bit. And what I did have it... Yeah, you can't quite see. It's almost... I like wrapped it over and then over, so when I pulled it down, it actually stuck right out here and there was a big like frill. Know, but it's kind of relaxed now where I've been, it needs reshaping because it's been out today, it's gone all frizzy and stuck together, but you can get it a lot. I love those little waivers. But I'm wondering if I might pull it off as like sexy secretary or if it's just going to look ridiculous and geeky. So here we go. I'm saying geeky. <laughs> That's not sexy secretary. Nah, nah, no way, no way. That's cutting it. I mean, it's just not happening. It was because they were blue framed and quite small. I thought they might, they might work a bit kind of high. <laughs> um. Anyway, I don't know if I'm going to continue with my um. He meowed me off of here just now, actually. He meowed me off of there. <laughs> Literally came and stood very close. And he meowed me off of there twice. <laughs> um, that's, that's right and good and fine. I gave him his bed. He looked gorgeous on it. And I'm happy that he's here. He slept there all night last night. Anyway, no, the anxiety series. Like... The people I really want to be watching that are the people that probably won't be watching that. I say that a lot. It's like, the people that are watching, I love that you're here. <laughs> but I think the people that watch it need to be watching it for different reasons. I think sometimes I give a voice to people who don't otherwise get it heard because they keep encountering the kind of people that I'm, I would like to be watching this. Um... And that is just fucking, that's fucking beautiful. And I know that goes a long way because it went a long way with me when I was working with Dr. Blueperty. Um, finding out a lot of shit. And I can remember saying, I can't remember what it was specifically in regards to, but I remember saying, so I can't fucking stop it then. And he went, no. I said, so all the shit that people have been saying is you can do this, you can do that. And he just said, no, not when you're in that mode. You can't, you can't understand it differently. It wasn't just to do with losing my shit. It was to do with my understandings, my interpretations of things. And how I would respond or whatever. And it's just, it's just automatical, like I say. Um... And that was what first struck me, is like, well, surely just all those people out there just need to know some of this shit, then this really would kind of cut by, like, two-thirds the amount of issues that people have living with it. <laughs> and that's the thing. I think the angle I was going to come at next... <laughs> was to be a bit belligerent to some of those people that get all shouty about curing you from mental health issues and say, you're sure that you are not just a fucking compulsive helper? Because <laughs> a lot of people haven't heard of that and you will get a lot of denial once you tell someone what a compulsive helper is. But a lot of those people are fucking compulsive helpers. And that's the thing, is they are putting themselves in a position of being a counsellor or a mental health worker of some description, a therapist, an advisor, a teacher, a superior. Um, and anyone who takes on those kinds of roles is always encouraged, more than very strongly, to take a good fucking long, hard fucking look at themselves. 
because, quite frankly, it blurs your interpretations. So you look at everything through the eyes of you, the the divorcee or the widower or the, the whatever, whatever type of issue you're sort of carrying or whatever. That's how you interpret everything else or you relate every feeling back to and that sort of shit. And people don't do any of that, but they still hand out therapy. <laughs> um, so I think it's probably like easier to come at it from the other way, from our side looking out. Because <laughs> the people who need to watch this and change their minds don't think they need to change their minds and won't think they need to watch this. But it's something we need to be aware of. <coughs> the therapies can almost become the theraposa. <laughs> I'm turning back on them. When they're saying, are you sure it's not just this? I never just say, are you sure you're not just fixing yourself? <laughs> On your deep-seated and unresolved psychological issues. Because I'll tell you one thing. Most people have got them. <laughs> so even just the fact that you say that sentence will make most people go, <gasps> He knows. Internally. <laughs> Probably fucking would. But as I say, the thing that doesn't need to fucking change. So probably the thing that we need to ask for. Is not talking about it. It. <laughs> oh, with my favourite human, we've got a couple of taboo subjects where she will blow the fucking whistle on me. And I trust her enough to allow her that. <laughs> That kind of thing. Because what she says is, it just doesn't get you anywhere. I have listened and I have listened. Hoping that it, you would run out of things to say and you haven't. And it doesn't go anywhere. So, <laughs> she vetoed me on some things and that's fine. I get what she's saying. Because she doesn't try and fix me. doesn't like she doesn't ask how I've been so much as how I am sometimes when people ask me how I've been I'm thinking oh whoa, whoa you mean in fucking general well shit then <laughs> it's all <laughs> it's like I'm gonna count it all up together <laughs> But it's quite important because it is that sort of living in the moment thing. That's all we need. That's all we need is people <laughs> to be gentler and people to be easier and people to be understanding in the sense that it is understanding. But then it's up to us. Like I said in one of my anxiety videos. What did you say in one of your anxiety videos? I am... Um, Getting there, if you would fucking stop interrupting me, I might be able to fucking think of it. All right, I'll leave it to you. In the meantime, I was thinking in the background, and I've still got nowhere. Um, everyone's experience of anxiety will have its own nuances. I didn't say that at all. But that's a kind of another way of saying what I said. As in, don't just treat someone with anxiety. Oh, you need this, you need that. You da -da 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 -da, because what works for some won't work for others. That's the kind of shit I came out with. So then we need to tell them that. We need to tell them that. And we need to think about what parts of my anxiety process can I handle? 
and what parts of them can't I face? That sort of shit. <laughs> and boil it down to specific things and say to people, look, when this happens, can we do this? Or when that happens, can we do that? And just make them aware of it and just, you know, it's embarrassing, isn't it? It's embarrassing. No one wants to say, hi, I'm a fucking management issue. <laughs> but I think once you become this hilarious, you fucking have to. In actual fact, I think it's quite an advantage to be this hilarious. Um, I probably need to get a little wackier because to think to most people that I just think I'm a, an, just an ordinary crossdresser. I can't have that. I won't. I won't. I shan't. I just won't have the word ordinary used to describe me in any fucking way at all, darling. I'll fucking boot you up the fucking cunt if you fucking try it. Ooh, I'd make a really scary fucking, like, country girl. I look a bit of a country girl at the moment, don't I? Called, like, ooh. Ooh, hang on, I thought I almost had one then. Oh, Charlotte. I think I look like a Charlotte. Yeah, a bitch of a Charlotte. <laughs> Yeah, quite a Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte as fuck, actually. Um, but yeah, I think I think it fucking helps. This is like, would you expecting something fucking run of the fucking mill or something? And why? And if you were, I don't even think I need to talk to you. Thanks. <laughs> um, But, how many minutes am I on? Ooh, oh, time is rattling on. I, li I wish I was further back. I'm literally sitting like, look, I'm sitting like such a woman. It's comfortable. If that is really comfortable. This is, this is one I have had the shitting piss taken out of me a lot about. Looking, just sitting like a sex kitten. It's like, it's fucking comfortable. I don't fucking care what you think. It's fucking comfortable. Get off of my case already. And my bottom. <laughs> Come on, wrap it up, Mikey. Wrap it the fuck up. Where the fuck was I? I keep losing my place, don't I? Um, ordinary things they're scaring people off. Give them the details. <laughs> Give them the details. Well, I do. I do like like the phone call thing. I've just like I've recently discovered that I'm going to just start being fucking honest about it just saying mate i probably won't pick the phone up if it's just a phone if it's your face i probably will do with that information what you fucking will if you think i'm being manipulative and controlling fine fine if you think that that would be joining in playing my game fine think that i don't fucking care that's not caring what people think that's truly caring not caring what people think because a lot of people would force themselves into doing something and answering phones when they really fucking shouldn't be, when all they need to do is speak m more clearly and communicate more clearly to their friends and like, communicate their fucking needs, if that is a fucking need. And for me, communicating is difficult on texts, it can be, and phone calls. Phone calls, it can be. And like going around, going to see people and stuff, I can cancel suddenly. That's just me. So those are the things I need to be honest about. And if people want to be my friends, they'll fucking understand that. You know, I've got mates who will float off and disappear and not come back for hours and shit like that. Just leave him to it. And people get worried. You know, it's fine. Don't leave him. He'll be back. That's what he needs. That's what, that's one particular friend that I just suddenly thought of there when I was boiling it down. But it's happened a few times. It's like, he'll be back. Don't worry about him. It's fine. He's fine. And he is. I'll see him. Right. right. Yeah. It's just, it's just what you need to do occasionally. It doesn't matter. There's no point making a big deal out of it. And like the only people that worry about it are the people that don't know. So you think, well, like if more people knew, but then it's difficult for more people to know because everyone gets embarrassed about those little things. That's what we need to learn. That's what we need to learn is to stop getting so fucking embarrassed about it. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Do you know what? I was speaking to someone earlier and I talked about that. Um about a whole, you know, we were talking about the man-woman thing, unsurprisingly, and I talked about a man is someone who's not fucking ashamed of himself. And she seems like, absolutely, absolutely. 
So, but so's the woman. I'm not being sexist when I say that. But it's like, don't be fucking ashamed of yourself. So that's what I'm going to call this video. And good night.